In later summer of 2012, when I first time flew over the Pacific to Portland, everything seems novelty. Clean streets, streetcar, pedestrians, this list could go on endlessly. Soon, as an urban planner, I found something familiar. Several fountains and parks, but landscape architect Lawrence Halcrow. I've seen them before in some academic magazines, but wasn't aware of where they are. Suddenly, they came to me, and I got the chance to observe them closely. From summer to winter, the leaves tend from green to yellow, then fall down to the ground. Its beauty astounded me. I decided to learn more about it. I sent a mail to help print Landscape Conservancy. Its president, Stephen Cook, gave me a wonderful talk and taught me some stories behind these places. In probably around 2003 or 2004, I was asked to co-found the Halprin Landscape Conservancy, whose mission it was to add supplemental funding for capital improvements and maintenance of these fountains and parks in Portland. That includes all the parks and pedestrian promenades in the South Auditorium Redevelopment District, which was the Portland Development Commission's first redevelopment project in 1950. This used to be a big neighborhood where there's the old shops and the old neighborhoods and the little houses. They came in and bulldozed them. Pull down a whole community, relocating 336 families and 289 businesses. Doesn't sound pleasure, but it happened and gave architects and planners the opportunities to introduce their new design philosophy. Lawrence Halperin won in the competition. He went out to different places and sketched. It's based on his experience of visiting the Sierra Mountains. There were three parks. There needed to be some connective theme or storyline. And he used essentially a geographic cross-section of basically from the Cascade Range, which is local here, down to the valley bottom. This is sort of a cross-section. It's explaining sort of a high mountain spring where water comes out of the earth and flows down. And there's a waterfall here. And then it goes through meandering valley. And then it comes to another drop. So it's like a watershed or the water system. This story of these parks is built around that experience of beginning down in the valley bottom and hiking up to the spring to where the water comes out. It's a metaphor that talks about the natural processes of erosion. So erosion and the vegetation, these are all sort of thematically placed. For Cork Fountain, this is the last park he did in Portland, and it later became the most published work. However, it wasn't part of his original commission, but it was the foundation for a metaphor that he used to choreograph the parks as a unit. Ira Keller, he was a, a commissioner on the Portland Development Commission board. He was a very strong proponent of having Larry do this project. So later, after the project was complete, the name changed from Four Court Fountain to Ira Keller Fountain. As his sketches show, there's all kinds of different qualities of water that are created here. You have 
the area where you can go behind the waterfall. And then you have these uh, big giant steps that almost look like a fish ladder. That's the mounds. When you go down into the southern Willamette Valley, you'll start seeing these little buttes occur in the valley bottom and then the streams that meander through them. This is asphalt, and there, it was specific to use asphalt because it's a homogeneous material, and there's no joints, because water doesn't have joints in it. So it is a metaphoric meandering stream. Lovejoy Fountain represents an upriver region where the water rushes out of the mountain into a high lane. Compared with Keller Fountain, here the water flow is narrower and swifter, and it cuts out a V-shaped landfall. When these buildings were not there, you could see the West Hills of Portland. So you could see the houses and the trees and everything. And they knew, because there was a plan for this area, that there would be a building there. They didn't know when it was going to happen. In fact, it didn't happen until like 30 years after the design. This structure, Larry designed in collaboration with a famous architect named Charles Moore. This was an abstraction of the hillside that you could see beyond. This is the source fountain. This idea is that the bricks are made from clay soil. So this is like the minerals in the water coming up. Again, sort of abstracted or a metaphor for this idea. In June 23, 1970, the open day of Fulcourt Fountain, people crowded here to celebrate. They even jumped into the water, singing and dancing. Architectural critic Adam Lewis Hutville declared it to be one of the most important urban spaces since the Renaissance. Today people may forget those titles. They'd rather to combine some important personal memories with these beautiful fountains and parks. Often, there are more birds than people in Lovejoy Fountain. Sometimes, people just go through them, even not aware of that. There are 191 lights on this fountain, and maybe five of them actually work. It's time to have it to renovate the whole project, and we're looking at the lighting. That's one reason why the Conservancy Group was founded, because the city is not maintaining these to the level that they should be maintained. Between the benches, the little thing, that was a drinking fountain, and it was a custom designed by Halperin. People use it for an ashtray. So we're gonna renovate that, because it was lined with glass tile, and it had water coming out. Here's another drinking fountain. Beautiful, beautiful. So there's some things that are not working. This used to be a garbage can that was built in to the work. They stopped using these because it was a matter of convenience. The government wants it all the same. 